How could I? This is Flat Earth LG Rough Sky. Mm, walk with me, dog hunter. Okay. Come on, we're just going to sit over here for a little while. We're looking at the full moon. Which, yeah, it's, it's been very interesting times. You can see those two little baubles underneath it, I hope. Oh wait, Coop. He's off his lead, so, you know, I'm letting him run a mark, but maybe he'll get home before I do. I'm halfway back up the hill, and many, many things have occurred to me. I don't know whether or not making a video at this time of night is appropriate, but, you know, you have to take everything as it comes. And so this evening, watching the moon coming up was bloody beautiful. Yeah, it, it seems so, so close. Now when you look, it's just this tiny little bulb up in the sky. These tiny little lights behind it, uh, or underneath it, I should say. Well, yeah, behind it works as well. <laughs> the dog's gone into the paddock. How cool is that? I just let him do his thing. As long as he doesn't wander too far. Okay, so as I'm wandering home, I'm thinking, yeah, Swacky D. Swacky, Swaky. My good mate, Lee. I love you, bro. And so I could see you dropped a comment while I'm just still walking and taking pictures and you asked about Rahu and Ketu and yes I've been meditating upon that quite a lot as I'm on this walk I'm actually gonna walk over this fence so I can rest my new staff take a quick sip And just relax my arms for a little bit. Oh, oh, yeah. It gets a little bit harsh. So it's the 5th of July, 2020. And we mate, Swacky D, well, what do you go by Nate nowadays? I don't know. What? Yeah. If, if I look now, I'd lose my video capabilities, so... What I can do is just scan around with my phone as I think about it. See, I've just reached a, a tree grove. So what, not much will slot, show at all. If I was able to see through those trees there, that's where the Southern Cross would be. Come back around, we're back at the moon. But this, the moon is pretty much what it's all about at the moment. So we've got these two interplanetary bodies, as they might call them. I have a very strong suspicion, because I know that there's somebody called um, Faith. Faith Howden. She's going to be howding me on this. And she'll say, oh yeah, that one's Saturn. And the other one is Jupiter. Or vice versa. Look, I can zoom in on them. Like, this camera will not give them justice, but they are there. There's no doubt about it. That's one there. And the other one appearing to be beneath it. Won't show it. Oh, hang on. There it is. Won't really show on this um, camera ability. <laughs> oh, hang on. Ten times zoom. That one is probably Jupiter or Saturn. I don't know. Like, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the names of the Celestials are what matters least. The fact is there's a very full moon. The light that's showing while I'm talking 
is nothing like it looks to the naked eye. In fact, I'll see if I can zoom in just enough until it looks similar to the naked eye. See, isn't that? Just does no justice. Maybe if I hit focus on the fucking moon. What about if I do that? Focus on the moon. Eh, a little bit better. Uh, I heard his collar tinkle. I thought he might have fucked off. So the last thing I want is my little dog to disappear and get out in somebody's neighbour's place because he fell his nose. He's a stupid dog. Come here, kid. Yep, he's all good. Right now. So, Rahu and Ketu. As far as I'm concerned, they are just uh, keywords used to describe something that basically um, yeah gosh what do they call them again nodes they call them the nodes and I'm not a big fan of a word like nodes so you know that that's that's my prerogative I'm I'm a little bit you know, biased in that particular sense. If you want to start talking about nodes, okay, that's fine. That's that's going down a different tangent line from what I personally go down by. What I want to know is what causes a lunar eclipse without having to worry about Rahu, Ketu and nodes. But when it comes to Rahu... Okay, which is what Mr. Swacky, me old mate Lee, asked me about. And that's basically what I'm trying to get around to. Is that, that's the moon. Okay, full moon. And it is fully illuminated by the sun, which had already set way over there. Okay, I didn't come out early enough to actually catch it as it rose, which I generally like to do. I love to come out, but it's winter. It's fucking cold. I'm wearing a beanie and a jacket and a shirt and a shirt and something else and long underpants underneath my jeans and boots because I don't like the cold. Okay, I'm a bit of a wuss when it comes to cold. Cooper just runs around naked in his Cooper jacket, no matter what. So when it comes to Rahu, I do believe there is a um, a definitive definition for what that is. Ketu, on the other hand, to me, it just sounds like a catchphrase because they're talking about nodes. So they're talking about nodes of the moon, nodes of the this, that, and the whatever. And that's where you start to get confusion because people who think they know shit will start to say, oh, yeah, well, that's just talking about the nodes. And I'm like, well, what the fuck is a node? Okay, and I'm putting this one out here because I would love to see somebody explain to me straight up and down, black and white, what is a node of the moon. Okay, if you can do that. In fact, I have seen it before. And I'm like, okay. In the heliocentric model, that makes sense. But in the realistic model, where we're looking out from a flat Earth across a moon with its wandering stars beneath, just moving across the sky 
as they do in circuits. Oh, hello, beautiful. I didn't realize I had an audience. Hey, Cooper. Cooper's fucked off, that's what the horses were telling me. Anyway, it's all good. He'll catch up. Is well, yep. The whole reason why I stopped and paused and just started to make this video is because Rahu is an actual physical thing. And it is more or less, more or less, who knows? Nobody's seen it. You can't see it. But more or less like the moon. But because when the moon is in a new phase, it's too close to the sun to be seen, then Lilith, or Rahu, is also so close to the sun that you just can't see it. You just can't see any celestials. And this is why I actually love this image, why I'm talking about it as I speak, is the fact that you can see a celestial directly below the moon. In fact, uh, oh yeah, the other one's still there. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. It's still there. That little one there. It's still there. So, this says to me that we cannot see celestials in daytime. Uh-huh. That's because of an exposure issue. The whole sun is too bright. The whole day-lit atmospheric gases are too bright. You cannot see it. But now in the presence of the moon, the moon now is the overriding force of the exposure issues. And so you can't really see anything around it because the moon is telling my phone what the um, exposure should be. But that one there is so bright, yeah, whether it be Jupiter I, I guess it's Jupiter, you know, I go by instinct, and the little one below it, Saturn, so I've got my, my um, P900 out, that's right, I still don't have a P900, but there's that, right, and all the other stars, because of the exposure of the moon, are not visible. And because those trees right there, right now, where I happen to be standing. Oh, God. I've got a long way to go to find my dog, too. Um, you know, the Southern Cross was basically about there, you know, from moon. Pan, pan, pan. Southern Cross would be about there. But there's trees in the way, and there's a bit of cloud cover. Not what I actually call cloud either. Most of it seems to be chemtrails and stuff. I'm not going to digress into that. I just wanted to... Yeah. Take a sip of my beer and think again about what Spikey D was saying about the... Um, Rahu and Ketu. Right, yes. And the reason why when that moon is as full as we see it right now, occasionally it's a... Actually, I think there's an eclipse tonight. I might actually stay out here and watch this. Can you see? No, you cannot, of course. See, any... Are you going a little far? He's a good dog. Um, there's absolutely nothing 
in the visible sky eclipsing the moon. But when it does, when it does, holy shit. I have a feeling that it is going to happen tonight. If it doesn't happen by the time I do get home, I'm just going to go check my um, moon calendar again because it tells me all this stuff. I'll come out and do another filming and I will show you that because the sun, like to most people, think it's gone behind the curvature. That's why we are in the darkness of the night. I agree. Absolute bullshit. Okay. So, <laughs> plovers are great like that. They, they are always there to tell you. What the fuck are you talking about? That's an absolute fucking bullshit. So, because the sun appears to have gone beyond the obscurity point behind us, the obscurity point being like from here, not even 50 metres, not even 100 metres. <laughs> you know, and when I walk up to the hill, maybe at the best vantage point, I might be able to see, oh, three, four kilometres, if I'm lucky. You know, walk a bit further up, see somewhere. Oh, yeah, there might be some points where you can see mountains 10 kilometres away. Ten kilometers, and yet you think that obscurity point <laughs> is not sufficient to obscure stuff thousands of kilometers away. I mean, uh, that that that's the one that gets me. I'm um, going to finish this video now with a brief look at the moon I'll zoom in a little bit further because it looks cool when I do there you right there moon fifth of July twenty twenty tonight near the easternmost point of the Australian mainland this is Flat Earth Ozzy Roscoe, signing out. Bye.